Hello and welcome to Library Research for CST 300. I'm Jenny Dale. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I am your Communication Studies Librarian. This is the first in a series of videos I'm creating for your class, CST 300 Communication Theory. If you need any help finding sources, evaluating sources, or citing sources in APA for this class or other CST classes, please let me know. My email address is jedale2 at uncg.edu. So the focus of this first video is on identifying primary research articles in communication studies. So by the end of this video, which will be pretty short, um, I hope that you feel comfortable defining primary research in the field of communication studies, identifying key characteristics of primary research articles, and distinguishing between primary research articles and other types of scholarly article sources in the field of communication studies. So when we think about primary sources, we often think about things like historical artifacts or firsthand narratives or even original works like uh, literary texts. But each field sort of has its own definition of primary sources. And in the field of communication studies, when we talk about primary sources, we're typically talking about primary research articles. And what that means is that we are looking for research articles where the authors of the article itself actually did their own research study and are writing about the study that they conducted. So these are three things that you can look for when you're trying to identify primary research articles in communication studies. The first is to look through the abstract for some clues. I always recommend reading the abstract of any article, particularly scholarly articles, because it gives you a sense of whether or not the article you're going to look at will actually meet your information needs. In this case, it's particularly important because you're going to be able to tell from the article abstract, usually, if there are hints about whether or not the source is primary research. So common phrases that I look for are things like, in this study, or our research suggests, our findings suggest, things like that. And we'll look at an example in just a minute. The next thing to do to double check is to go and look at the full text of the article itself and see if it has a section that's labeled method or methods or methodology, something along those lines. And then finally, for CST 300, you want to make sure that the article is from a peer-reviewed scholarly journal and that it was written by communication studies scholars or researchers. So let's look at a couple of examples. So here I have a screenshot of an abstract of a primary article. And the name of the article is, Is Reality TV a Bad Girls Club? Television Use, DocuSoap Reality Television Viewing, and the Cultivation of the Approval of Aggression. I found this article in the communication studies database called Communication and Mass Media Complete. Um, and what I did is I went in there and I searched cultivation theory, one of the theories you may cover in your CST 300 class. So this is an article um, from a journal called Journalism and Mass Communication Quarterly. But what's really important for our purposes here is this abstract. So I have on the screen uh, red boxes around three different things here that tipped me off that this was probably a primary article. The abstract starts with the phrase in this study. To me, that is like right off the bat just a pretty clear sense that this is going to be about a study that these authors, Scharrer and Blackburn, actually conducted themselves. I pulled out a few more terms here, findings and respondents. That's from a sentence that says, findings among 248 U.S. adult survey respondents show the ability of exposure to docu-soap reality television, et cetera, et cetera. So findings and respondents here are giving me a clearer sense of what kind of study it was. So they must have, when they talk about findings coming from respondents, they must have created and deployed a survey or questionnaire in some way. So these authors did conduct this study. I'm going to go now to the full text of the article itself. So as I mentioned, this is the second thing that I do whenever I'm looking at whether or not a source is considered a primary research article, um, I go to check for full text. And in this case, I do have a view full text option. And 
and I'm just going to keep clicking until I actually get to the full text of the source itself. My preference here when there is a PDF option is to click download PDF um, because it's much easier to cite a PDF in my opinion and also easier to just kind of skim through. So we see our abstract again, we've already seen that, um, but I want to scroll through and I want to point out a couple of things. One is that you'll see throughout this introduction and the section called literature review, you will see a lot of in-text citations. So when we're talking about a primary research article, we're not saying that the only research the authors did was the study they conducted. Before they conducted that study in order to sort of set the study up and to come up with their research questions, they would have had to do quite a bit of secondary research, which in this case usually means reading lots and lots of other articles, including lots of primary research articles. So sometimes students in CST 300 tell me that they get thrown off when they see um, lots of other sources being cited because they're really looking for that original research, but you still actually want to see a lot of other sources cited. It gives you a sense of what these authors and these researchers did before they created their own research study. So I'm gonna scroll through, you'll see there is a lot of that in here. It's a long literature review and they give you, in this case, their hypotheses and research questions. You won't always have a section called that, but it's nice when they have it. Um, and then following that, we have exactly what I'm looking for, that method section. And the method section, really the purpose of it is to tell you exactly what happened. So in this case, they're telling you about their sample, how they decided who to survey, how they sent out their call. They're gonna tell you about the measures they used what they were asking people to sort of rate. They're gonna tell you about their results, and this is often where you're gonna see things like tables and charts, um, sometimes graphs, lots of numbers in here, different sort of formulas. Um, and then after you get through the results, there's usually gonna be some kind of discussion where they talk about the implications of those results. What, when they took those sort of raw results and that raw data, you know, what conclusions are they drawing from it? So this is an example, again, of a primary research article where the study that was conducted was a survey um, that focused on docusoap reality television viewing and used the framework of cultivation theory. So I'm going to head back to my slides here, and I want to show you another example of a source. And this is going to be an example of a non-primary article. Before I go into this, one of the things I want to say is that I am not in any way suggesting that this is not a great article. I'm sure that it's very well written. I'm sure that um, this author, uh, whose name apparently is James Potter, um, is someone who probably did a lot of research, who probably knows quite a bit about cultivation theory. Um, but in this case, it's just not the kind of source we're looking for. So the name of the article itself is A Critical Analysis of Cultivation Theory. And two things that I want to pull out from the abstract here that gave me a sense that this was probably not primary research is that I didn't see anything about a research study. What I saw here is um, a sense that the person who wrote this article is engaging in a critical analysis, which is what it says right at the beginning. I have a red box around this critical analysis. And I also later in the abstract have a red box around this essay evaluates. So that gives you a sense of um, the fact that this is an essay, it's probably something that is a little more theoretical, philosophical, and is not something that reports on a study. And to kind of check my assumptions there, again, you don't necessarily have to stop there, I'm going to go and take a look at the PDF full text of this source um, and see what I can find here. So again, I am seeing um, quite a few citations, in-text citations, um, giving kind of a historical um, and theoretical overview of cultivation theory, seeing um, what this author is cited from some other um, researchers. It even talks about other studies that have been done. Um, but as I'm scrolling through here, this is quite a substantial um, article. Um, as I'm scrolling through here, I don't see anything um, that indicates to me that in this article, this author is describing a study that he conducted. 
Um, so this, our, this author has done lots of secondary research, has read lots of things, has thought a lot um, about this topic of cultivation theory, but I'm not seeing a method section. I'm not seeing anything that indicates to me that this author did original research that is being reported here in this article. So I'm just going to go back to my slides here. Um, this is this distinction takes practice. Um, you won't immediately be able to distinguish between a primary and a non-primary research article when you're looking at communication studies literature. Um, you can always contact me. Again, my email is j-e-d-a-l-e-2. If you have questions about this, you can talk to your professor as well. Um, but again, this is not something that uh, is sort of innate knowledge. It's going to take some time and some practice to make sure that you're feeling comfortable identifying these kinds of sources. So our next video in this series will be about finding books and book chapters, and then we will move into a video that focuses more on finding these kind of sources. Hopefully now we feel more comfortable identifying them, but we want to also make sure that we can do some searching so that we can actually find our primary research articles. So I'll see you in the next video.